it's worth. Sandeep Jay Shah is now joining us. He's managing partner at Motila Loswal Private Wealth Management. Uh, Sandeep, great to have you with us here on the show. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, Sandeep, your thoughts in terms of uh, the uh, correction we've seen and uh, what are you making of it and prospects for the aggregate market, uh, really? Uh, because we are now talking about, you know, uh, large falls on a daily basis. So, uh, the uh, do you have any views uh, on, on aggregate levels where things should start to base out, etc., or do you think it could stay like this for a while? Uh, well, actually, you know, the, the playbook I'm still using is the 2003-2008 bull market, uh, though there are, uh, of course, a lot of differences. We had seen in 2004 a 30% correction. Uh, it, uh, this was, again, left by global liquidity tightening at that point of time. Here, of course, we have a situation where the 40-year bull market in bonds in the U.S. has ended. And that's really the context in which we need to see, you know, all the central banks all across the world scurrying to raise interest rates. Um, and that could perhaps continue for a little longer. Of course, a lot of things that were unthinkable have now become acceptable. A 0.75% uh, rate hike by the Fed with the probability of another one, even if it, either 0 0.5 to 0.75. So in this context, you know, uh, to reiterate, you know, we saw two 30% corrections in this 2003-2008 bull market. The difference was that those were pretty short, sharp, and swift. Uh, but, you know, here in the context that we've got geopolitical issues, supply chain, and at the same point of time, you have this bond bull market ending, uh, it's not surprising that, you know, this uh, sort of, this correction has gone on in, in terms of time frame a little longer. And that's really where the whole issue is. Um, of course, the Nifty's just seen about an 18% correction, even if small and mid caps have corrected significantly. On the one hand, you know, the biggest bubble uh, globally was actually in these meme stocks, uh, you know, these uh, uh, stocks which had no earnings, uh, which were actually close to being, you know, debt uh, ridden companies which were almost on the brink of collapse going up. Now, those all those stocks have corrected 90, 95%. So it shows that some of the excesses in some parts have been corrected. And uh, while we're talking about, you know, the NASDAQ having corrected 30%, you know, those tech stocks, have some of them have corrected 90%. And uh, so, uh, so in any case, in this sort of a sell-off, you know, the, la the, the strongest would fall last. And that, in that sense, seems to be happening. So while we could always see another 4 to 5% correction, you know, as well, um, I'm hoping that we don't get to 30%, but, you know, max correction we see is about 25% from the peak. Uh, not saying that we need to get there, but I'm hoping that that's the max because, you know, the strong flows, look at the corporate earnings growth in India, so strong, 35% last year, the strongest since 2004. Again, back to the 2004 2003, 2008 playbook, right? And uh, at the same point of time, we're still expecting going forward about 17% earnings CAGR. That's right. not exactly a bear market, mm. is that? Okay, all right. Uh, you know, Sandeep, take that point then. There was some froth in the system. So globally, stocks have corrected. Now the markets are getting used to a hawkish Fed. So that as well is taken on board. But the question that everyone's posing, and a lot of retail audience out there, they want to know if they have money, how much should they allocate now? And in case we, how much should they allocate now? And in case we go the distance, maybe fall another 5 7%, or maybe go closer to around a 30% correction on the headline index itself, how much should they allocate now? And how much should they allocate, say, in the next 6 to 12 months? Go ahead. That's really the most important question, or, or really the most important aspect to focus on. Because even if I or anybody else, or even the investor got the absolute market bottom call right, how many of them actually invest? You know, I remember giving a call at 7,500 Nifty to buy, and there were very few people who were willing to buy. So, you know, it's really about investor psychology, and it's really about investor temperament, and it's really about asset allocation. And in that context, you know, uh, our proprietary temperature gauge index suggests that we are very close to cheap zone, cheap in a classical sense. Uh, um, and to that extent, I think it's time to now start accelerating flows, inflows. But, you know, for those who are still a little... Uh, uh, concerned with volatility, spread it out over the next three to six months. Uh, and you might still see some short-term downside, but I think you've got to live with that because, you know, unless you can live with some sort of volatility, you really shouldn't be in equities. Mm. No, got that. Uh, the big, the, you know, that 35% uh, Sandeep number you uh, quoted, that was uh, uh, off, off a year when uh, there was COVID lockdowns, right? Uh, so no, that, no, uh, you said last... 2006, actually. 
No, you said last year 35 percent growth comparable to the strongest Earning. growth since 2004. Uh, so, That's but that right. that 35 percent growth comes off a shutdown year. So, I don't know how comparable uh, that is, how useful that is. We saw a shutdown, uh, Prashant. The, the shutdown was only in March, right? The lockdown happened in March. But uh, no, broadly, I'm saying FI 22 over 21. 21 was a lockdown year. So that's what I'm saying. Anyway, my point right. is yeah. how much how much risk to earnings is there going forward? Uh, so where are you at in terms of FI 24 Nifty earnings estimates? Uh, that number used to be a thousand rupees not uh, not very, not long ago, but people are starting to bring that lower. Uh, do you think it'll uh, get to uh, you know what 10, 15 percent kind of levels, maybe lower? Or you think uh, it, it stays relatively insulated? Uh, uh, well, that's, a, again, a good point. Uh, actually, our research is still forecasting about close to 1,000 rupees earnings there. Uh, but I must admit, you know, there is obviously some, uh, some risk to that. Uh, but, you know, I'm not sure there's going to be a significant change just yet. Um, you know, because we're, we're already beginning to see that, you know, some parts of the economy may be bottoming out and actually showing signs of recovery already. And even as, uh, you know, the uh, commodity prices have come off a little bit, and even though earnings for uh, uh, in the near term for the commodity users might show some decline because of, uh, you know, the, the inventory uh, being being reduced. So, you know, those cycles will play out. So I think a 4 to 5 percent downside I think should be expected, but that doesn't really, uh, frankly, change the needle, you know, because you're still, you know, an earnings growth of about, let's say, instead of say 17, 18 percent, let's say it's close to 15 percent. Uh, I think there's still a reasonably good number and definitely not the, uh, not what you expect to see in a bear market. Okay, all right. Uh, Sandeep, then, uh, you know, what are you bullish on? I believe utilities are on your radar and some of those PSUs as well, that otherwise they could be a little bit dull, but maybe in terms of capital conservation. In this sort of environment, they could be good, particularly the ones who are paying out bigger dividends. Tell us, what are you bullish on? Yeah, actually, I turned bullish on the PSUs after more than a decade, about almost a year, year and a half back. And uh, some of them have actually uh, done well, uh, selectively, uh, not across the board. Uh, but yeah, clearly, I mean, you know, some of them, the, the dividend yields are still very attractive. Some of these PSUs are, you know, re really looking to re-engineer themselves, are increasing their exposure to green energy. Both, of course, in the, in the private sector space as well. But in the private sector, of course, you don't have the dividend yields. And, uh, you know, valuations are a little difficult to actually come to terms around. But you, you do want to stay exposed to the green uh, energy there, even in the private space. But I think on the, uh, you know, the power uh, manufacturing companies, even uh, the power uh, distribution companies on the PSU space, I think are quite attractive uh, even now. Uh, you're not going to see very aggressive earnings growth, uh, especially on the distribution and transmission side. But I think uh, valuations of a comfort and dividend yields are still good. And that does, as you rightly mentioned, provide a lot of safety in these volatile times. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, what else, uh, Sandeep, which is uh, maybe, by the way, look at the market go, uh, Nigel. 100 points drop. 100 points, just like that. This is... Uh, you know, uh, we use that, we overuse the word, but treacherous. I think uh, that basically describes it. Look at that sharp, sharp fall. Uh, let's just take a closer look at this, uh, and it will tell you the uh, intensity. I mean, so this is vertical. So basically, we were at uh, 15,384 or so at uh, 259. Uh, so it's basically in the last five minutes that uh, the market has just lost about 100 points, just like that. Uh, so now down 75 on the day and 115 from the day's high uh, so far. Uh, so this is a uh, uh, tricky, tricky market. <coughs> Sandeep, uh, where else are you finding opportunities? I mean, if you if you are, uh, let me ask, put a question to you. I don't know if you have a view on this name, Muthut Finance, very highly profitable company, uh, sort of lends uh, money and gold as collateral. So. Uh, actual end final credit loss is next to nothing. They uh, end up recovering money. Uh, uh, conservatively, they'll do about 115, 120 rupees in earnings in F5 23, uh, which means it's now at 1,000 rupees trading at some eight, nine times earnings. Uh, your sense? I mean, I don't know if you have a view on the a sta a stock. If you do, please uh, uh, weigh in. Otherwise, I mean, uh, where are other opportunities according to you? Yeah, actually, you know, I think what's been happening in some of these gold lending and BFCs is that you know they've had a, uh, they've had a, they've had their gold rush, and uh, you, you know uh, where you know they were continuously seeing rising margins, rising, uh, uh, you know, very low NPAs. That may still continue, 
But you know, the margins are under pressure. There's a lot of competition. Credit growth isn't as strong as it used to be. Uh, and you know, while uh, the company you mentioned might be you know the leader in the space, but what you're really seeing is you know the impact of the competitive intensity actually playing out. I think partly some of the rural distress uh, are playing out there. Uh, so it's it's become more of a you know a steady state, steady play kind of. Uh, stock rather than the real high growth uh, that it used to be um, and in that context you know i would really uh, still want to go with uh, uh, some of the larger private sector banks and the larger uh, nbfcs there uh, or even you know some of the rural focused nbfcs where i think there could be a huge uh, uh, delta playing out there compared to the gold lending nbfcs where the deltas probably already played out Okay. All right. Uh, thanks, Sandeep, for stopping by. Uh, we've noted your points uh, in terms of the markets. You're not expecting a very large correction from India. Maybe 5-7% will be par for the course. But otherwise, you believe it's time to start allocating some money. Earnings growth, you're quite bullish on as well. Good speaking to you. By the way, we we're talking about the headline index, but take a look at a few stocks in the broader markets. SBI card should come up for you on the screen. I don't know what's gone on there, but SBI card suddenly has seen a sharp dip. So pull up the intraday chart of that one. You have Goodrich uh, Properties as well. Just pull up a few of these stocks. They are seeing very, very sharp declines. Nippon Life as well is another one. So all these stocks, some of them were trading in the green, and suddenly they have uh, got smacked. Uh, Trent as well up for you on the screen. From, from, from the broader markets as well, it appears someone's cleaning out before uh, the weekend. They don't want to hold some of these positions, and that's why some of these, you know, these are frontline FNO stocks that are actually moving to the low point of the day. Slip into a short break, you come back. As always, we'll get a check into dealing rooms. Nimesh will be joining us in our special segment, D Street Chatter. We'll also tell you what to buy or sell. Technical experts will be back with us.